Hey guys, welcome back to another video. Today we are unboxing this Beta FPV 950MHz ELRS Micro 2X module. So I actually won this Micro TX module in a random selected Albert Kim giveaway. So he kind of just made a random video out of nowhere and picked me as a winner for commenting on a video about a month and a half ago. So that's pretty cool. So we're gonna open this up and take a look at it. All right, so right here we have the box. As you can see, it says RF module, and it's a Beta FPV Express LRS module. And then here are the different versions it comes in. So this is the 915 megahertz version. And then here is some support information. And then up here on the front, it says Beta FPV. So opening this up, we have the module right here. We also have this Moxon antenna. So this is for 950 megahertz and it's pretty big because of that. So there's this adapter right here and you can screw that onto the bottom of here and then screw it onto the module. So that's pretty cool. And then they also include this little JR plug to three pin JST connector, which goes on the bottom of the module. And then the final thing in here is a QR code for support and it says beta FPV. So here's the module. Looks pretty nice. It has a nice matte finish on the plastic, which is pretty cool. And then there's this OLED screen and then the five position joystick. And then here's the back. So that's the module. And then right here, we have the antenna, which is, this is just the stock antenna. If you don't want a large profile antenna. And then here's the other antenna right here. So as you can see, this is pretty big and it'll give you a very good long range reception. You can kind of see the indentation right there for the antenna. So it runs along the sides and then up the top. So that's pretty cool. And then as I said before, you get this little adapter here so that you could actually make the antenna stick off your radio. So this attaches right there and then attaches to the module. So you have some room to put it on your transmitter. And then there's also this plug. So depending on the transmitter you have, usually you, you just use these pins in the back with a JR bay and you could just plug this module in and use it. And as long as your radio is running OpenTX, you can use the Lewis script to control it from the radio's menu. If you don't have that, you can actually plug this into here and then solder the according cables, signal, ground, and voltage to an existing transmitter that doesn't have an actual bay and control it uh, that way. But then you have to use the screen. And that way you can control it even if you don't have a transmitter that has a JR bay. So this is kind of just an alternate method. So personally for me, I will keep this handy, but I'm probably going to use this most of the time since this is a long range module. So you'll want the best type of antenna for the setup. I have my TX-12 from Radio Master right here, and it does have a JR bay in the back right here for micro TX modules. So you just remove this plastic piece right here, and then the module can slide in. clicks in nicely. It has a very nice fit. It's very solid. There's no wiggle at all, which is awesome. And then obviously you don't want to power on the transmitter without putting the antenna on. So 
I'm gonna put this adapter on here. It has a nice snug fit. And then from there, you can fit this onto here. And just like that, we have our module set up inside the transmitter. So this is just first impressions. So I'm just gonna turn it on and show you guys the RGB lights to start. So I'm gonna power this on. And so as you can see, even though the radio is on, the module isn't on. And that's just because the model that I have right here isn't set up for any external modules. So if I hold this button right here and make sure I'm in my model menu and then go to setup right here, I can scroll down. And then right here, instead of using internal RF, I'm going to turn that off and then go to external RF and turn it on to Crossfire because ELRS is just a open source version of Crossfire. And then I'm going to select it. And now the module is powered and is turning on. So the fan is on and the RGB lights are also on. So next we're going to go over specifications and then I will show you guys how to use it and set it up and flash firmware. So I'm going to go over specifications of this Micro TX module. So this is the 915-868 MHz version. This goes up to 500 watts max. The packet refresh rate is switchable from 25 to 50 to 100 to 200 Hz. The RF power output is also power switchable from 10 milliwatts to 50 milliwatts to 100 to 250 or 500. And then right here we have this XT60 port and the input voltage is 5 to 12 volts. So basically a 2S battery. And the USB-C port right here is for updating firmware and configuring settings. And then of course I mentioned there's this RGB fan right here, which provides cooling to the main board. This right here is an OLED screen, and then it has this 5D button is what they call it. So you can push it down and up, down, left, and right to configure different settings. And then it has the typical JR Bay pin layout. So the first two pins are NC, then the middle pin is five volts, the fourth pin is ground, and the fifth one is Crossfire serial port. Specifically, the type of SMA connector right here is an SMA-KE port. And then if you're wondering the configuration for the pins on the bottom of the module here, it is ground, five volts, and then crossfire signal. This works in any transmitter that has a JR bay, and you can configure any of the settings using the OLED screen and the joystick, or if you have a transmitter with OpenTX and you put the correct Lua script onto the SD card contents, then you can control the ELRS menu via the transmitter menu. So not this screen, but on the front side of your transmitter. Now we're gonna go into installing new firmware on here, making sure everything's up to date. And then I can show you guys this inside the transmitter and configuring different settings with the Lua script. All right, so right here, this is the expresslrs.org page. And so what you wanna do is make sure you have the 2.0 configurator selected so that you don't install the older version. Um, this link right here that I clicked is just the quick start, kind of how to flash and just different information for TX modules and receivers. So you can look that, at that if you want. And then there's the download configurator button on the main page. So you can click that and it will bring you to this GitHub link. And from there, you can either download the zip file or the exe. I just downloaded the exe. Of course, if you're using a Mac or a Linux computer, then download the appropriate file. And so if you download the zip, make sure you extract the files and then you can run the exe. For me, I'm just going to run the exe straight from the download. So I'm going to press open file. And this installer will pop up right here. So right here, you can just press install after you have your path selected and it will install. It does take a few minutes. So I did kind of just skip forward here. And then once it's done installing, you'll get this complete page and you can press finish. And then from there, the configurator should open up. So this is the main page. So that's basically it for installing the configurator and it should be ready to go for flashing both modules and receivers. All right, so as you can see, I have the configurator open and then I have my module right here. And so updating the module firmware, first what you wanna do is plug in the module with the USB-C and it will turn on and the RGB lights will flash. And so now you're ready to configure. So th this is the backpack category. So that doesn't apply to this type of module. 
but then we have the configurator right here, which is for all the normal ELRS TXs and RXs. So these are the releases right here. You want to make sure you have the latest one selected. In this case right now, it's 2.3.0. So I'm going to select that and then target. These are all the different kinds of devices here. So we're going to select the beta FPV 900 megahertz. And that's just the general category. And then you have to go into device and this is a TX. It's not the micro version and it's not the receiver. This is just the normal 900 megahertz TX module. And you want to make sure that when you select the TX module that you select the micro version because technically the JR Bay ones are part of the micro series. And then we're flashing via the USB, not Wi-Fi or anything. And then right here you can download the Lewis script if you want to put that into your transmitter's contents in order to use it with the module when you plug it into the JR Bay. And then right here you can also just reset all of these settings and basically set the module back to default. And then right here we have standard mode and manual mode. You really don't want to do anything with manual mode but we have standard mode right here. These regulatory domains, this is for what region you're in and it sets different parameters based off of what's legal in your region. So I'm in the Northern American region, so that's FCC. And then binding phrase, if you don't know what a binding phrase is, basically it's just a little set of characters that you can use to automatically connect to your receiver and your transmitter together. So instead of like pressing a binding button and going through the whole binding process, you just put a binding phrase into your transmitter or TX module in this case, and then your receiver, and when you power them both on, they will automatically connect. In this case, we're not gonna have anything right now because I don't have a receiver that I'm setting this up with right now. So these right here are just for like, if you have a heat sink on the back of your module, it will just basically allow it to go up to higher power levels. So this is a fan, so it knows that it can go up to the 500 watts that it's rated for. Um, I guess this is for just depending on if you want to have that safety precaution or not, but like I said, there's already a heat sink on here, so you shouldn't have to worry about that. Um, this does go up to 500 watts max. And then UR inverted is pretty self-explanatory. It's for if you have, obviously, a transmitter that outputs inverted crossfire and you need it to receive that type of signal. So this setting right here just allows you to use the Lewis script with OpenTX to control the module. So as you can see, it says it requires OpenTX 2.3.12 or newer or Edge TX in order to use the OpenTX menu with lower latency, so faster response time. This is for telemetry data, so if you're interested in that, you can read this. Um, this is a little bit more complicated, but it's not necessary at all. And then this setting right here is pretty self-explanatory too. It basically connects to Wi-Fi after a set amount of seconds from boot mode, and um, this way you can flash firmware over Wi-Fi if you have an ESP8285 uh, chip on board so that you can actually update via Wi-Fi, which it's good to have that on just in case your module does have that. You also have the home Wi-Fi SSID if you want to set that manually, and then also the home Wi-Fi password if you want to put that on here too to connect. And then this is also just for disabling RGBs during configuration, which doesn't matter. That's just a random option. So that's basically it. So right here, you just select your COM port. So I'm just going to select, it should be this one right here. And then I'm going to press build and flash. And it is flashing right now. The module isn't doing anything. It just has, says ELRS 915 and of course flashing could take a couple minutes so just give it some time and it will go through so we'll just come back when it's done and see what it says. Alright so it did take about five minutes or so I wasn't sure if it was going to work but it did work as you can see it says success on the screen so of course now it says update the Lewis script on your transmitter which makes sense because we updated the firmware on here so now the transmitter also needs an update um, so I'm going to put the Lewis script for the transmitter to talk to the module into the transmitter and then I'll show you guys how to do that and then we can just test out some of the settings. So for my original firmware update, I'm gonna make sure I press the download Lewis script button right here. And I'm gonna save that. And so now that I have that, I'm going to plug in my transmitter and I'll show you guys what to do next. All right, so really quickly here, I have my radio. So I'm gonna check what version of firmware is on it. So I'm gonna hold two trim switches in and power it on, which puts it into bootloader mode. And so now you get these settings. And so as you can see, we're in OpenTX 2.3.11. All right, so I have this USB E drive right here and I'm just going to quickly format it. And then start. So I'm on this page called opentx.org slash downloads and this has all of the firmware versions. So I'm gonna select 2.3.11 and then I can scroll down and download SD card contents right here. And then I want it for the TX12 right here and then you just basically want the latest release 
So that's this one right here. All right, so I put the zip into this folder. And I'm just going to extract it real quick. So extract all, extract. All right, so now that this is complete, you basically just want to take all this stuff right here and cut it and stick it in the main SD card. And then you can just delete this folder now. So now you have all of the contents in the SD card. And so now that we have all the contents for the SD card for the version of OpenTX that we have on our radio, I'm going to copy the Lewis script right here that we have from earlier. And then go back to the SD card. And I'm going to go to scripts. And then you want to go to tools. And then you can just paste it right here. And now you just have all of your normal contents. So this SD card should be ready to go. So now that all the contents are on the SD card, you need to get it into the radio. So on the TX12, you open this little door on the bottom and the micro SD card slot is right there. And then I'm just going to use a little screwdriver to push it into place like that. And then you could close the door and then you can also put the module on the back of the transmitter. So take this off, stick this in here. and you should be ready to go now. So I'm gonna power the transmitter on and you'll know that the contents of the SD card are working because you'll now hear audio that's playing from the SD card contents when you turn on the radio. Welcome to OpenTX. So it's working. It's expecting a different version even though it said it was on OpenTX 2.3.11 but I'm just gonna press okay anyways. So we're on the model that we created earlier that has Crossfire activated on the external RF module. And I'm going to go to system right here. And if you scroll down, one of the tools should be Express LRS. So if I click that, the module turns on. And now it's going to be talking to the transmitter and you can change the settings still in here or you can change them in here. So you can go to TX power and it's set to 500 milliwatts and you can change the packet rate up here and you can basically control all the settings that you normally would in here but in your transmitter from the tool menu which is pretty cool so as you can see everything is working and you could still change everything in here and so yeah that's pretty much it for setting it up on an OpenTX radio or just for use by itself without an OpenTX radio. So real quick, this is what the new menu looks like with the updated ELRS firmware. So you have packet rate, update via Wi-Fi, bind mode, and telemetry, and TX power. So yeah, and then this flashes when you're not binded with any receivers, so that's pretty cool. So I hope you find this tutorial helpful and this little review of the module also pretty informative. Uh, if you have any questions, let me know in the comments. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.